All right, so we're going to talk about composite functions today. First, let's uh, talk a little bit about function notation. So in this case, we have an evaluation type problem where we have a function of x is expressed as 5x plus 1, and we want to find the value of that function when x is equal to 3. That's basically what this says. So if I want to find f of 3, I substitute 3 in to every x in the problem. and solve. So f of 3 in this case is equal to 16. Now if I have two functions, like so, and I want to take and find f of g of 3, this is kind of like a composition of functions. It says find the inner piece first, and then go ahead and find the outer piece. So let's do that. This says the first thing is to find f of g of 4. I take the innermost first, so I'm going to take f of g of 4 just means taking and substituting a 4 in for x in the g function. So when I do that, I end up with f of negative 8. Now it says take that negative 8 and plug it into the x and the f function. So let's do that. I have 3 times negative 8 plus 6, which is negative 24 plus 6, or negative 18. So here we have a composition of functions. Basically, f of g of x or this says f composed that's that little circle guy right there of g of x and these two mean the same exact thing so in this case I have g of x is equal to x squared minus 1 and h of x is equal to 3 minus x and I want to find h composed of g of 3 so again, I can rewrite it. Most people like seeing it in this fashion, but it really doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. So this is very much like the last problem we just did. We'll take the 3, put it into the g function first. So this is h of negative 3 quantity squared minus 1. That's going to go to h of basically 9 minus 1 or 8. And now I plug 8 into the x in the h function. So that's 3 minus 8, which is negative 5. That's my answer. So this one's a little bit different. It says find h of h of 4. Basically what it means is plug 4 into the h function first. And then find that solution, which is negative 1. And now take that negative 1 and plug it back into the h function. So I have 3 minus negative 1, which is equal to 4. Now, we won't always just evaluate for a number value. We're going to sometimes have to put an expression into these compositions. So this says take 2w minus 1, plug it into the x value in the g function first. So what I have is I have h of 4 times 2w minus 1 minus 3. That's going to give me h of 8w minus 4 minus 3 or h of 8w minus 7. So now I'm going to substitute 8w minus 7 into the x value within the h function. So that's 3 times 8w minus 7 plus 5, 24w minus 21, 
plus 5 gives me 24w minus 16. Again, not a numerical value, but an expression value for the composition. Now, in each of these two problems, what we have is we have an expression that is made up of a composition of two functions, f and g. And what we want to do is we want to state what those two functions would be so that f of g of x is equal to w of x. That's what we're basically doing. So, in this case, it looks like an x plus 9 is thrown into a fourth root. So, if I say f of x is equal to the fourth root of x, and g of x is equal to x plus 9, whoops x plus 9, then if I took and substituted x plus 9 into the x in the f function, I get w of x. So I've identified those two values. So again, we'll do the same thing for this next problem, except in this case it doesn't appear that anything has been substituted in necessarily to one specific function. It looks like two things are similar and maybe those have been substituted in to a fraction value. So if I say f of x is equal to x over x plus 4, and g of x is simply equal to x squared, and I were to take and substitute x squared into every x in the f function, thus giving me f of g of x, that will equal w of x. All right, so now we're going to talk about domain of compositions. Typically, when we think about domain, we talk about what makes the function undefined. So we're looking for square roots, we're looking for fractions, and seeing what are the limitations to the domain. So by definition, given two functions, f and g, the composite function, f of g of x, or f composed of g, is defined as we've already talked about. And the domain is a set of all numbers in the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of x. This this is a tongue twister right here. All right? But in English, what it basically means is you need to find the domain of the innermost function. So in this case, we're talking about g of x, the thing that you're plugging into the first function, and then the domain of the composition. So the domain is going to be a function of basically two things. So let's go through and do a couple of these problems. And remember, we're looking to find the domain of g of x, or the innermost function, and then the final composition. So in g of x, which is equal to 3 over x, the domain is x is not equal to 0. It's equal to everything else because this will be undefined when the denominator is zero. So now if I go f of g of x, f of, well g of x is just 3 over x, right? So what I have is I have 2 over 3 over x minus 1. And that's going to be f of g of x. I'm going to get this simplified a little bit. multiply by the reciprocal, so that's really 2x over 3 minus x, and this is f of g of x, and we notice that in this function, its domain 
is limited by its denominator. So the domain here is x not equal to 3. So for my f of g of x function, the domain is x is not equal to 0 and 3. Let's do it again for the next example. In this case, f of x is our innermost function, so I look at f of x and I say domain for f of x. Is x is not equal to 1. And then I take a look at g of f of x. So I'm going to take g of 2 over x minus 1, which is equivalent to taking 2 over x minus 1 and plugging it into the x value in the g function. So I've done that there. I'm going to simplify that out a little bit, multiply by the reciprocal, because that's all that needs to be done. So that's 3 times x minus 1 over 2, or better yet, 3x minus 3 over 2. Now on this fu function, which is g of f of x, I've got no problems with it because there's nothing that's going to make the denominator undefined. So overall, for g of f of x, the domain is just the domain of the f of x function, which is x is not equal to 1 because the domain here, once again, is all reals. take another problem. Innermost function is g of x. So if I want the domain of g of x, I have a square root. These can't be negative, so we want to know where 2 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. That's just where x is less than or equal to 2. And that's my domain. Now I'm going to take g of or f of g of x. So again, this is like f of root 2 minus x, and I'm going to show. So I'm going to take the root 2 minus x, substitute that in for x in the f function. So I have root 2 minus x quantity squared plus 1 which is equivalent to 2 minus x plus 1, or 3 minus x. This has no limitations on it. Its domain is all reals. So similar to the last problem, the domain is strictly affected by the innermost function. So the domain of f of g of x is simply x is less than or equal to 2. And that's all we've got today. Do your mind math lab and fill out the summary. We'll see you tomorrow.